this video will describe and show you and explain in a step-by-step -step how to perform systematic review and what are the essential things to do to perform systematic review followed by meta-analysis and in this video also all the relevant topics related to meta-analysis will be discussed and explained such as heterogeneity test sensitivity uh, analysis funnel plot force plot and prisma the following topics will be explained described and discussed what is a systematic review and meta-analysis what is prisma and why do we have to perform and draw the chart for prisma what is an overall effect size and how do we estimate that and what are types of effect size what are the types of meta analysis that can be done and carried out and what is a subgroup meta analysis why do we perform heterogeneity test what is forest plot and why do we have to draw it which model to use when performing meta-analysis? Is it fixed model or random model? What is final plot and why do we have to draw it? Uh, do, we, do we need to do Eager's regression test? And why do we need to do sensitivity analysis? If you find this video useful, do subscribe to the channel, leave any comment in the indicated uh, box and activate the notification bell to receive the recent and uh, latest release uh, into the channel of several different video clip and click on the like icon and share the video link with others so the channel can expand and improve to include a large scope of different statistical method and how to analyze data using uh, several different uh, statistical packages such as SPSS, Excel, Stata, Jamovi, R Statistic, or Statistics, Graph, Pad, Prism, G Power, Python, and RevMan. Systematic review and meta analysis. So what is a systematic review? Systematic review is a type of a research study that involved uh, searching and researching and reviewing most if not all the published literature on a specific topic. Systematic review is a literature search that involves a complete reviewing and searching for all published publications on specific topic those studies that um, investigate a specific objective or specific aim or specific question so the systematic review will aim to identify all the relevant publication uh, or research studies that had been performed or already carried out on a specific research question or a topic so those publication already published and there is a data on them and based and this identification of these studies will be based uh, on following a certain criteria or condition or defined set of criteria for which uh, article or which research study to include and which one to exclude so it is a type of searching all the databases available to look for a publication that has been released into the databases that have addressed the same question so 
the systematic review will summarize all the findings on a specific topic or specific question. So systematic review can be done with or without meta-analysis. So far, systematic review is a literature search on a specific topic. Systematic review can be done without a meta-analysis. Uh, but if it is done with meta-analysis, then the systematic review will pull out all the uh, relevant studies and will pick up and select all the research study, similar research study, independent research study that addresses the same uh, scientific question or the same aim or aims and perform a meta-analysis which will provide a quantitative summary uh, with a statistical analysis of all these combined study results of those research. So the difference between systematic review, it will perform a literature search and it will look for all the publication on a specific topic and it will summarize the finding. The meta-analysis with systematic review will add additional layer in which a statistical analysis will be performed on the data or the finding extracted from all those relevant published literature uh, studies and then produce an overall summary and significance of the findings from those uh, multiple studies. So what is a meta-analysis? Meta-analysis um, is a second step post systematic review. So first of all, a systematic review will be performed, then the data extracted from selected and specific research study is uh, taken and a statistical analysis is performed. So meta-analysis is a statistical method used to combine and gather and summarize the result and the finding of several independent studies. So the meta-analysis will eventually pre provide a precise estimate of the effect size of a specific intervention or exposure or treatment by pooling these results from multiple studies that already investigated the same research question. So it's just gathering the outcome and then produce an overall effect size. So it is a statistical analysis that combines the result of two at least has to be two or more studies to estimate the pooled effect size. So the, the minimum uh, number of uh, research study is two and more. Uh, that uh, meta-analysis will uh, uh, try to uh, um, calculate at the end or estimate the overall pooled effect size. So a meta-analysis is a statistical method that analyzes data from already previously published studies, research studies, and um, already have uh, um, findings and uh, outcome and to eventually identify from those studies whether there is a patterns and whether they agree or disagree on the findings and then make an overall conclusion from those multiple studies. So the meta-analysis is a statistical method that will measure the variation or the heterogeneity among those uh, studies uh, and the result of those studies by uh, giving a, or producing or calculating the confidence interval for each specific study by performing a heterogeneity test which is i square to find out whether these uh, uh, results from those multiple uh, research study 
um, ha uh, have degree of variability or they are closed in their finding to each other. So the meta-analysis eventually will produce different graphs and different statistical um, values and from those values a conclusion can be drawn. So what are the steps to perform meta-analysis? The first step is to define the research question. What kind of a research uh, or a study that you are interested in to make a meta-analysis. So you need to, to have a specific scientific question, a research question or a topic. Then use certain key words or terms to search different databases by doing a literature search. Those databases can be Medline, Ovid, Impays, Scopus, Web of Science, PubMed, Cochrane Library, and so on. So search those databases, um, scientific research uh, study uh, for those databases. Look for key terms or keywords and then set up a criteria for which articles or which research study to include and which one to exclude. So you, there will be a certain criteria or for studies inclusion and that is based on uh, a terminology called PRISMA. So selection of the specific study is dependent on the criteria set by the researcher. So once the um, uh, research studies has been uh, found uh, and identified, then a screening process will have to follow to select which one to consider and which one to exclude uh, by also drawing a prisma chart uh, setting up the criteria, then determine which study is eligible to be included in the meta-analysis and then finally perform the meta-analysis. And before performing the meta-analysis, select the effect size that you want to measure. So if those articles or research study uses hedges G, then stick with the hedges G or Cohen's D which works for when the outcome is continuous and the means uh, are calculated for experimental or treatment group and uh, control group. Or the effect size can be an odd ratio or risk ratio or hazard ratio or rate when the outcome is binary or dichotomous. Furthermore, the effect size uh, measurement can be on based on Pearson correlation coefficient. The next step is uh, selecting a model for meta-analysis, whether to go for fixed effect or random effect. Once those criteria has been uh, fulfilled and the number of uh, research study to include in the meta-analysis are identified, then the meta-analysis can be run and a heterogeneity test will be performed to measure and to give an estimate of the degree of heterogeneity between those selected specific research publication and a p-value is will be given and a value for the test which is i square will be given. So the overall objective of the meta-analysis is to produce a overall effect size. Taking the effect size or the uh, estimate measured in each study and calculate the pooled effect size where, and then determine the significance of that and the value for it from the combined uh, selected limited studies. The meta-analysis also will produce a forest plot. A forest plot is basically a diagram, is an output of the meta-analysis that summarizes the overall uh, 
data in each study. So there are three sections in the plot. A section for descriptive um, um, statistics showing the number of uh, uh, sample or the sample size, the uh, estimate effect size, whether it is a mean or it is an odd ratio. Uh, it shows also the p-value for each study the confidence interval for each study and the percentage of weight for each study and a second section which is a diagrammatic one which will show the overall uh, estimate effect pooled estimate effect the estimate size for each individual studies uh, represented diagrammatically and a third section which is important which will give the overall effect size with a p-value uh, for significance and uh, heterogeneity, a test for heterogeneity between those studies uh, using the I square. And also the meta-analysis will generate a further plot called the funnel plot. The funnel plot is a chart or a diagram that will show whether there is publication bias. And that publication bias can be confirmed or assessed or tested by performing an Eagles regression test. Now, what softwares can I use to do a meta-analysis? Well, there are several. The easiest one is the Excel. And if you have the formula or the equation for each statistical test, then the Excel, the one to go for, or there are several softwares that have the meta-analysis uh, function or statistics already pre-installed, such as SPSS, Stata, GraphPad Prism, R Statistics, Python, Ref Manager. Ref Manager is, is dedicated for meta-analysis. And another software which is Jamovi and GM. So there are several software for performing and carrying out the meta-analysis for a data post doing a, a systematic literature review based on a standard or specified criteria um, drawn in a chart which is called PRISMA. PRISMA is an abbreviation for the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis. So what is PRISMA? PRISMA is a set of guidelines and standards for reporting systematic reviews and meta-analysis in uh, medical research or healthcare research. The PRISMA was developed to improve completeness in reporting of systematic review and meta-analysis. It also was developed to improve the reliability of these type of studies, i.e. systematic reviews and meta-analysis. It ensures that methods and results of the systematic reviews and meta-analysis are correctly and clearly reported it also evaluate the reliability of the finding. So, PRISMA is a guidelines that consists of two parts. The first part is 27 item checklist. The second part is four phase flow diagram. So this checklist provides framework for reporting different parts of the systematic review. This checklist, the 27 item checklist, 
addresses sections of the systematic review including the title the abstract the research question the methods the results the discussion the funding sources the study design the search strategy the data extraction and quality assessment and statistical analysis it also recommend assessment of risk of bias in each individual study so this is the form for the 27 checklist there are two pages here they are available online as given here so in this uh, checklist or the form for the checklist there are 27 checklist as shown here section and topic checklist item and the location where the item is reported so for the title there is an item uh, checklist item for the title for the abstract and for the introduction and for the methods for the abstract there are additional 12 checklist that has been produced and there is a form for it to fill so each section within the systematic uh, review and meta-analysis there is a checklist um, and this checklist the location where this uh, item is uh, identified has to be uh, inserted here for the uh, methods and also as shown here under the method eligibility criteria search strategy data items study risk of bias assessment synthesis methods and for the second part of the form the study selection um, result of individual study the discussion section there are four items that has to be located uh, in the systematic review and also there is another section for the uh, other information as the support the complete uh, competing interest and so on so these 27 checklists in addition to the 12 checklist for the abstract has to be uh, filled uh, before submitting and during formation and shaping up of the systematic review and meta-analysis so the second uh, part of the prisma is a flow diagram the flow diagram has four phases in it or four sections those sections provides summary of the screening eligibility selection and exclusion process and the criteria of collated studies for the analysis in the systematic review and meta-analysis the diagram have four phases the identification phase the screening phase the eligibility phase and the included study in the uh, um, systematic review that is the fourth phase for the identification phase the diagrams have um, boxes in it and these boxes has to be filled so for identification first of all the um, aim of the research um, or systematic review and meta-analysis has to be clear and defined and then several different uh, publication databases can be searched with certain keywords that are relevant to the objective or aim of the uh, review uh, some of these uh, databases are the PubMed, the MPES, the Co Cochrane Library uh, the web of science uh, scopus and so on 
So any of these databases that has been searched with certain or specific keywords, the number of studies or publication or records that has been identified in those uh, search engine for publication has to be reported in this box and then any duplicate there will be the next step will be to filter those um, uh, articles or studies that has been uh, selected and those that are duplicated will be removed before moving to the next step which is screening once the number of the uh, records or uh, papers that have been identified to be relevant to the uh, intended uh, systematic review the next step is to screen those paper for title and abstract so each step here will lead to reduction in the total number of the uh, records or papers so those selected in the phase of identification will be put for a screening phase uh, for the title and the abstract whether the title and the abstract is relevant to the topic of the uh, intended uh, systematic review and meta-analysis those that are not relevant will be excluded and the reason or reasons for excluding the records or the papers will have to be given whether the record was just only a, a conference um, half page or the language of the record is not english so those omitted or removed record has to be um, counted and inserted in that box and the reasons for um, exclusion has to be given the next phase is to check for eligibility by reading through the full text uh, article looking at if there is a full text article to be assessed for the eligibility of the article or the paper uh, to uh, the intended uh, systematic review and meta-analysis whether the content uh, uh, matches with the objective or the aims and those records that are addressing the same or the exact um, aims uh, or objective uh, with an outcome measured that is uh, similars then those will be uh, recounted and inserted here and then those um, records that are uh, not relevant to the uh, overall objective of the systematic reviews uh, and meta-analysis has to be reported and the reasons should be given uh, whether the outcome uh, from one study is different from another study or the measuring scale for one study is different from another so in each phase of these uh, uh, of the uh, prisma or the di diagram uh, reduction in the total number of the articles to be selected for the meta-analysis or the systematic review once the articles that are relevant and fulfill the criteria and the condition then those studies or publication will be counted and included in the analysis if there is only the objective is to uh, write down a systematic review without meta-analysis if the objective is to perform meta-analysis on the or on the data extracted from the uh, several independent uh, um, uh, clinical or research study then the number of the studies that need to be included 
will be reported for performing the final phase which is uh, a quantitative meta-analysis which is a statistical meta-analysis that will combine the results from those selected and picked up um, research studies and generate an overall uh, estimate of the effect size. So this is the prisma diagram that set the frame for how to proceed from the beginning until the end of performing the meta-analysis. What criteria is selected for selecting the uh, articles, uh, the screening uh, performs, the excluded record, or records and the reason for that the eligible articles and the one that are included in the final step which is the meta-analysis that will form part of the systematic review effect size when doing meta-analysis so what is the effect size we hear about this uh, term uh, repeatedly in the literature and in uh, research studies. Uh, effect size is a statistical measure that quantifies the magnitude or the strength of a relationship between two variables. One of these variables is experimental variable uh, and the other variable is the group variable or two variables one of them is exposure the other one is the outcome um, the effect size also quantify the difference between two groups that is used when the two groups are normally distributed and uh, uh, they have a continuous data in it and the mean is determined for both groups then the difference between the means for these two groups can reflect or represent the effect size so the uh, difference between the two groups measure how or measures how large or how small is the difference between the two groups whether one group have a higher mean and a second group has a lower mean then the difference will be large if the means for the two groups are close to each other in a value then there is a small mean difference and that mean difference is a is valued when performing meta-analysis and it will reflect the effect size as sometimes it is uh, the, called as standardized uh, standardized different um, uh, differences between means and also the effect size can estimate the likelihood of an event occurring in one group relative to another so for the likelihood that can be used and estimated when the uh, variable or the outcome is binary or dichotomous uh, categorial have two categories in it then uh, the likelihood of event occurring in one group relative to another one is estimated and that can be uh, measured to give an effect size value. So for effect size estimate for the first option is that when the data are continuous and then a correlation is established between the two variables, then the value of that correlation represent the effect size when the uh, mean is determined for the two groups and a difference is calculated then that can represent the effect size 
and when the data are or the outcome is uh, categorical or dichotomous then the likelihood of an event is estimated which is the odd ratio and that can represent the effect size so the effect size will provide standardized way to evaluate significant observed effect in a study or experiment so in a, a study that have two groups one is control and the other is a treatment or experimental and then a p-value is generated and found to be significant that is not enough but the effect size will provide a standardized way to evaluate that significant by giving a value which is for the effect size uh, so the effect size will determine the extent to which the independent variable which is in the in some cases can be a treatment or intervention or experimental that can influence dependent variable which is an outcome so to which extent these uh, treatment conditions affect the outcome and that can be represented by an effect size so a larger effect size suggests a stronger relationship or a larger differences between variables based on which measurement has been used whether correlation or differences between the means however for a smaller effect size indicates weaker relationship or smaller differences between control and treatment so the effect sizes of several studies are combined from multiple studies to provoke to produce um, an overall estimate of the effect size in meta-analysis so when performing meta-analysis most likely the effect size is estimated and it is combined all together from different several studies to eventually uh, uh, calculate the overall or the pooled estimate of the effect size so the common effect sizes that are in practice the first one is the standardized mean difference which is abbreviated as smd the second one is the odd ratio so the first one is used when the uh, variables or the data are continuous and the mean is determined for two groups then the uh, means uh, for both are standardized the second one which is the odd ratio is used when the outcome is binary or categorical so odd ratio or r will be used or a risk ratio can be used or a hazard ratio which can be used when there are two variables one of them is a time variable the other one is an event um, such as uh, death uh, uh, or uh, living so it is mainly used for survival analysis and finally the uh, other effect size is the correlation coefficient based on the Pearson correlation coefficient coefficient these are the five major uh, common effect size that can be used um, in a meta-analysis so the first type which is a standardized mean difference used this one of effect size is used when the combined study measures uh, or measure the same variable but uses different unit of measurements so two different studies or three different studies each one of them used different unit of measurement but the same variable or the same outcome then the standardized mean difference will be used to 
determine the effect size. So the standardized mean difference is the effect size. And this is, can be calculated by dividing the difference between the means for the two groups by the pooled standard deviation of the both groups. So you take the standard deviation for both group and then the mean differences uh, between the two group and then you divided the uh, mean uh, difference uh, uh, to the pooled standard deviation. So this is one of the uh, effect size. Another one which is the odd ratio. What is an odd ratio? It is used when the outcome variable is binary. So it is categorical. It has two levels in it. So the odd or the odds ratio represents odds of one event happening or the likelihood uh, of one event happening in one group relative to the uh, likelihood or the odds of the event occurring in another group. A third uh, effect size is the risk ratio. This is used when the outcome variable is dichotomous, which has only two levels in it, such as life, dead, yes, no. So uh, the study design uh, include or designs include in it a control group, then the risk ratio can be used. So the RR represent the risk of an event occurring in a treatment or experimental relative to the risk of an event occurring in the control group. And for a fourth type of effect size, which is the correlation coefficient based on Pearson correlation, it is used when the combined or multiple studies measure the relationship and the strength of the relationship and the direction of the relationship, whether it's positive or negative, between two continuous variables. So it represents the strength and the direction of this relationship between the two variables, whether it's positive, both variables increased when one increased, the other increased, or it is minus relationship, inverse relationship, in which one variable increased, the other one decreases. So the effect size can be continuous, can be calculated when the outcome is continuous, then the mean difference can be uh, um, calculated and that will represent the effect size or a standardized mean difference can be calculated. There are several uh, subtypes for the standardized mean difference. The first one is the hedges G. The second one is the Cohen's D and the third one is the glasses delta. So those are the most common SMD used or in practice when performing meta-analysis. However, when the outcome is binary, which is not continuous, then uh, the uh, research study will use an estimate effect size, which is the odd ratio or the hazard ratio or the risk ratio. So let's start with the first uh, SMD, which is the Hedges G. What is a Hedges G? It is a statistical method that determines the standardized differences between two means. So it is an SMD and it is used when the data are continuous. So that um, variables are both continuous and then a uh, mean is measured or calculated for each variable, then the difference between these means is calculated. It is similar to Cohen's D and Glass's uh, delta uh, effect size, but uh, Hedges G is preferred when the sample size is small. So when you have a small sample size, it's preferred to use Hedges G uh, than Cohen's or Glass's Delta. It provides this Hedges G, which is an effect size estimate, provide or provides more accurate estimate of the population effect size. Uh, 
it is calculated how do we calculate the hsg by taking first of all the difference between the means of the experimental and the control groups and dividing it by corrected standard deviation which takes into account the sample size and the number of degrees of freedom what does that mean it means that the main differences between the hedges and cohen d is that hedges uses pooled weighted standard deviation uh, instead of pooled standard deviation when performing meta-analysis so the equation for hedges g is equal to the mean for the first group minus the mean for the second group divided by the standard deviation which is in this case the pooled and weighted standard deviation so this is the formula or the equation for how to calculate hedges g which is an estimate of the effect size so larger value for hedges g means that the two variables the difference is large uh, smaller one the difference is small uh, but this hedges is standardized so hedges g values ranges from negative to positive so it can be positive it can be negative since we are subtracting means of groups so if the value is equal to zero then that indicate no differences between the two groups being compared if the value is positive then that indicate that the first group have or has a higher mean than the second group and if the first group have a mean lower than the second group then the hedges g value will be minus now this is for hedges g moving to the cohen d which is similar uh, to the hedges uh, g but with uh, certain variation it is again uh, an effect size estimate it is a statistical method that compare the mean of or the means of two groups it is calculated by finding the differences between two means uh, or a mean to or means of two groups and dividing that by the pooled standard deviation of two groups so the uh, hedges g is similar to this but that's hedges g is divided by the pool weighted standard deviation the cohen's is just by the pooled standard deviation the cohen's d is used to determine the effect size of a particular intervention or treatment uh, compared to uh, control it is often used in meta-analysis for comparison of a multiple uh, studies results so when you have several studies and we want to perform a meta-analysis on those studies then cohen d's uh, can be calculated which is an effect size to be to do a meta-analysis so cohen's values can range um, as shown here if it has a value of 0.2 then this represent a small effect size if it is 0.5 then it's a medium effect size and 0.8 or higher represent a larger effect size now we have discussed and mentioned and described the effect size for the hedges g cohen d and the third one which is an estimate size that can be used when the data are uh, continuous is called glaces delta it is a statistical method that determines a standardized difference between two group means so it is similar to hedges g and cohen d 
but it takes into the account the size of the control group. So it is calculated by taking a gain as in Cohen's D and the hedges G, the differences between the means of the experimental and the group and dividing that by the standard deviation of only the control group. So there is a variation between the effect size estimate based on hedges G, on Cohen's D and on glasses. If the uh, um, sample size is very small, less than 20, then choose uh, hedges G over Cohen's D. If the sample size is uh, uh, sample uh, size is greater or sizes is greater than 20 then go for uh, uh, hedges and cohens d both if the standard deviations are significantly different or different between two groups then choose the glasses delta so this well criteria will um, make it easier to choose which one shall I go for? Is it Hedges G? Is it Cohen D? Or is it the glasses uh, effect size? Or glasses uh, delta? Now, moving from continuous data in which the mean is measured and the standard deviation to a uh, uh, binary data that have uh, an outcome which is uh, um, binomial which has two levels in it so one of the effect size can be calculated using the odds ratio it is used for binary outcome or binary variable it measures the strength of the association between two binary variable in such as exposure and outcome, treatment and outcome. So it estimates the likelihood or the ratio of an event or the odds ratio of an event occurring in one group relative to another. So this ratio of odds of an event occurring in one group compared to the odds of the same event occurring in another group is called the OR or the odd ratio. This odd, odds ratio is used in case control studies. So the OR uh, values can range from uh, starting from zero and uh, onward, one and two and three and so on. So if uh, if the value for the R is equal to one, that indicates that there is no association between experimental control or between uh, exposure uh, and outcome. If it is higher than one, greater than one plus one, this indicate a positive association, increasing association. If it is less than one up to zero, and then it's indicate a negative association or relationship. And the OR cannot be in minus. So the lowest value, zero. So the effect size estimate, now we have uh, discussed and described the effect size when there are continuous variables using the standardized mean difference, three different uh, Estimate size, uh, hedges uh, G, Cohen's D, delta, uh, Glaze's delta, and then we discussed and described the um, odd ratio for binary outcome, and now for a, um, a continuous variable and looking at a correlation between two variables which can be represented by the Pearson correlation coefficient or an standardized one which is Fisher's Z. So the R will measure the strength and the direction of a, a linear. Here it has to be a linear relationship because we have two variables and they are in a linear relationship between two continuous variables. So the Pearson correlation 
uh, coefficient r is the effect size estimate and is indicating the uh, direction and the magnitude and the strength of this linear relationship so the value of the r can range from minus one to one so zero indicates that there is no relationship no correlation no association between the two variables whether they are experimental or control minus one and plus one indicates a strong correlation whether it's positive or it is negative invest or it's uh, uh, an increasing uh, and so lower than minus one and lower than one that indicate variation in the strength of the correlation so for pearson correlation roll of thumb if the r is equal to 0.1 then it has a low effect size if it is 0.3 then it is a medium effect size and if it is 0.5 it, greater than 0.5 then that represent a larger effect size Finally, when there are two variables, and looking at the correlation between these two continuous variables, then Fisher Z transformation can be performed. It is a method used to transform correlation coefficient into a more normally distributed variable that can be used in standard meta-analysis procedure. The transformed values are then used to compute the summary for the effect size across studies. So Fisher's Z transformation can be performed uh, uh, or done when performing meta-analysis. Forest plot is a diagram produced as one of the output uh, from meta-analysis uh, as shown here in this uh, diagram this is forest plot so what is a forest plot forest plot is a graph that presents the summary of a meta-analysis results so it displays the magnitude of the effect size across different studies so the meta-analysis is a statistical method that will combine data extracted from several uh, independent uh, clinical or research studies that addressing specific question those data are combined and analyzed based on the meta-analysis method and from the a uh, method and output is produced which is a forest plot so the forest plot will display the effect size across those different studies and the plot will also identify sources of heterogeneity in the results as these data are collected from several uh, um, studies and the plot will show and determine whether there is heterogeneity and the level of the heterogeneity and the magnitude of the heterogeneity so the plot forest plot consists of three important part the first part is descriptive statistic that shows the summary for this descriptive statistic the second part is a diagrammatic uh, representation of this uh, statistics and the third part is the statistical analysis summary so there are three sections the first section as shown here is the descriptive statistics the second part is the diagrammatic representation of this descriptive statistics uh, and the third part which is the uh, uh, statistical analysis which shows the overall uh, um, estimate of the effect size and the heterogeneity test results so the first part is a descriptive statistics as shown in the 
plot here generated from SPSS. It shows in the first part the summary for each study. There are 10 independent study combined and the effect size uh, was uh, used as the standardized mean difference which is the hedges G and the value is scored here and the 95% confidence interval is given for the upper and lower limits and statistical uh, p-value is generated with a weight percentage uh, weight and a weight percentage so the first uh, part here is the estimate effect size which is um, hedges which uh, um, based on a continuous uh, outcome or continuous variable based on the mean and the 95% uh, confidence interval is generated and the p-value for this um, hedges is also produced and a weight percentage. A weight percentage describes uh, and shows these values the uh, size of the sample uh, or the number of participants and larger samples will have higher weight percentage. So the summary for each study is shown here and as uh, described effect size for each study with the uh, sample size uh, which is not listed here uh, but it could be added 95% uh, confidence interval the weight percentage and the p value so this is the first part of the forest plot which is descriptive statistics there are different type of effect size depends on the outcome if the outcome is continuous the effect size could be the mean difference or the standardized mean difference and that could be one of these uh, taken or considered such as the hedges g the cohen d or glaces delta uh, if the outcome also is continuous the effect size can be a correlation coefficient r and if the outcome is binary which has two levels in it yes or no life or dead then the effect size could be the odds ratio the risk ratio the hazard ratio or proportion so the forest plot uh, now have three part the first part is the descriptive part the second part is a diagrammatic part or diagrammatic representation of the descriptive statistics uh, as shown here in this diagram there are symbols squares horizontal line vertical lines diamond shaped structure this part is a graphical representation of the descriptive statistics so the square symbol here the blue color coded uh, squares are the effect size uh, estimate and there are uh, different sizes of these squares and that is a reflection of the sample size larger sample size will have larger square smaller sample size uh, or smaller study with smaller number of participants will have smaller square size the horizontal line here represent the 95 percent confidence interval for each specific effect size for each study and the diamond shape here or the diamond shaped symbol represent the overall effect size estimated from pooling all these uh, different effect size from different from those separate studies the uh, blue line here is the line of no effect and the red dashed line here is the line of uh, uh, the overall uh, effect size which is calculated and found to be 0.53 as i have described previously the vertical blue line here at a value of zero on a continuous scale for continuous variable continuous outcome 
uh, is the line of no effect. If the confidence interval for the study effect size estimate overlaps with this line, the zero line, that suggests that the study results are not statistically significant. The third part of the forest plot is the section here, which is a statistical analysis, which is the um, overall estimate of the effect size. So it shows the overall or pooled effect size with p-value and 95% confidence interval. And it's shown here also the overall and the effect size, which is HSG, is 0.53 and the 95% confidence interval given with a p-value. And uh, uh, also in this section, the measure of heterogeneity is performed for heterogeneity test and an I squared value is calculated with a estimate for the P value. This measure of heterogeneity indicates heterogeneity in the effect size across studies and it is calculated based on Cochrane's uh, Q statistics with I squared value generated and a P value generated uh, and a tau squared value. So from this forest plot, uh, the pooled uh, estimate of effect size shows that uh, there is a statistically significant difference between intervention and control group based on the mean for each group in which it's calculated as standardized mean difference using the hedges uh, G. And this difference uh, is statistically significant as the p-value is less than 0.05 and the 95% confidence interval contains the uh, hedges, overall hedges value. That's the uh, for first part of the uh, analysis. The second part shows that there are uh, um, uh, not high level of heterogeneity among the result from those several uh, independent research studies as the I squared equal to 37% uh, and the p-value greater than 0.05. Having set it here, a data for 10 studies uh, that have um, uh, an outcome that is continuous and each study was arranged into uh, treatment uh, the, the participant arranged into treatment group and control group and the standardized mean difference was calculated and the forest plot is generated as described here this forest plot is produced from the um, SPSS software it's it is based on the SMD and it is a continuous outcome and this is another uh, forest plot produced from our statistics which is similar to the previous one uh, again it has three sections in it uh, this meta-analysis for continuous smd it has a section for descriptive which shows the experimental and the control the total the mean the standard deviation for each study and for each group within the each study experimental and control and the uh, calculated um, effect size which is the standardized mean difference and the 95 percent confidence interval and the weight percentage and the middle section here is diagrammatic representation for smd with squares and diamond and here at the uh, third section is the overall effect size which is the smd and 0.72 with heterogeneity test is calculated and the models uh, used here is the random effect models so this is the format the forest plot output will be produced if the effect size is a uh, uh, based on correlation coefficient then the outcome is uh, should be continuous and this data here i had placed for 12 study for each study the correlation coefficient is given with a total number of participants 
a plot looks like forest plot for this correlation meta analysis looks like this format this is generated from r studio and again a section for descriptive a section for diagrammatic and a section for overall um, effect size and heterogeneity test and the uh, effect size here is the correlation coefficient that is calculated for each study with 95% confidence interval and an overall uh, effect size and overall correlation coefficient for all those 12 studies when they are combined with the 95% confidence interval. Another data has been inserted here based on an outcome that is proportion in which the event uh, happening in a group of individual were counted and the total number of participants were also included and the forest plot from proportional meta-analysis looks like this format which is produced uh, or, or a layout which is produced from the uh, R studio again a descriptive section diagrammatic section and overall effect size and the proportion here or the effect size is the proportion as the proportion for each individual study is calculated with 95 percent confidence interval and also an overall uh, pro overall proportion from the combined 12 studies with 95 percent confidence interval if the outcome is binary which has two levels in it uh, and the effect size is odd ratio as shown here in this data set two groups treatment and reference and the event occurring in the treatment is counted and the event occurring in the reference group is counted then a forest plot can be generated from binary meta-analysis in a layout as shown here descriptive statistics diagrammatic representation and overall and heterogeneity as shown for the binary uh, outcome the descriptive shows the event happening in the experimental and the and in control and the total of participant the effect size is an odds ratio uh, for each individual study is calculated with 95 percent confidence interval and an overall uh, estimate of the odds ratio also is given who, here. If the required uh, effect size is a risk ratio when the outcome is binary, uh, as shown here, a data from 12 studies that each study has two groups in it, intervention and control, and the event occurring is counted, event not occurring is counted, total number of participants um, counted, uh, and uh, the control the event happening in the control is counted not happening in the control is counted and the total also is counted for the control the uh, output for the forest plot uh, for this binary meta analysis generated here this for this is the format generated from an SPSS uh, software again three sections descriptive diagrammatic and overall with heterogeneity and this ratio is calculated for each individual study with uh, p-value 95 percent confidence interval and the overall uh, risk ratio for the 12 combined studies is given here with 95 percent confidence interval and a p-value and the heterogeneity test uh, for with i squared and q value odds ratio and risk ratios are an estimates of an effect size that can be calculated when performing meta-analysis with an outcome that is binary odds ratio is an effect size that is estimated when the outcome is binary binary outcome is a variable that have two levels in it binomial or dichotomous uh, two levels such as agree disagree yes or no 
uh, smoke doesn't smoke. Meta-analysis is a statistical method that is used to uh, combine data extracted from several independent uh, clinical or research studies that addresses the same scientific or clinical question. The objective uh, from performing meta-analysis is to calculate the overall uh, pooled estimate of the effect size from separate independent uh, uh, clinical or research studies. Uh, forest plot is generated from the meta-analysis. Forest plot is a diagram that summarizes the output or the outcome from the meta-analysis or the outcome of statistics from the meta-analysis. The forest plot consists of three sections, a descriptive section, which includes the description for each study um, and the calculated um, estimate effect size, the 95% confidence interval, the p-value and the weight percentage. A second section which is a diagrammatic representation of the descriptive statistics and a third part which shows the overall estimate effect size from those pooled uh, studies with heterogeneity test and i squared value to examine and test degree of variability uh, among the uh, results from those several separate uh, uh, research studies. So what is odds? Odds measure the likelihoods of a particular outcome. Uh, it is the ratio of the probability that the event will happen to the probability the event will not occur. So it is calculated as the probability of uh, the event occurring divided by the probability of the event not occurring which is one p probability of event occurring is given a p p simple and not occurring is one, one minus p or a letter q what is odds ratio odds ratio calculated as the ratio of the odds of the outcome in the exposed group compared to the odds of the outcome in the unexposed group. So it does measure. So odds ratio is a effect size, an estimate of the effect size that measures the level of association between exposure and outcome. So here you have two variable, a variable for exposure and an outcome, and the association between those two variables are uh, or is calculated. So the odds of the outcome being associated with the exp exposure compared to the odds of the outcome being unrelated to the exposure. So the odds ratio is calculated as shown here OR equal to the odds in the exposed or experimental or intervention divided by the odds in the unexposed, the control, the reference category or group. So the OR is different from odds. Odds is the probability of an event occurring uh, relative to uh, not uh, to the probability of not occurring. And the OR is the odds in the exposed uh, relative to the odds in the unexposed. So here I had inserted an example to clarify the concept of the odds ratio. Here uh, two groups has been assigned, treated and controlled and the drug efficacy was um, counted and measured and the success of the recovery was recorded. Uh, as here 45 for the treatment group and those that did not recover using the treatment were also recorded and the total number of participants in the treated group is given here. 
for a control there was no drug or treatment um, uh, introduced and 10 individuals had recovered from the disease or the condition and uh, 55 failed to recover a total uh, number of participants were 65 so here for the treated group the event happening is 45 and the event not happening is 15 and the same for the control event occurring is 10 events not occurring is 55 so the odds for the treated is 45 divided by 15 and for the control is 10 divided by 55 to calculate the odds ratio then divide the odds for the treated or the exposed to the odds for the unexposed or the contr control as shown here 45 divided by 15 and then that's divided by 10 over 55 this gives us the value of 16.6 so the odds ratio um, for this treatment is equal to 16.6 so what does this value uh, suggest indicates this value indicates that there are uh, 16 times higher uh, odds of individual who are treated with the drug to recover from the condition compared to a control group so when the odds ratio is greater than one this suggests a positive association when the odds ratio is less than one this suggests a negative association and when the odds ratio of one indicates no association the odds ratio is often used in a case control studies and is suitable when the outcome is rare here i had inserted a data for 12 studies uh, to perform meta-analysis and each study had uh, recruited a participant who have been assigned to either treatment group or a reference group and the number of events occurring uh, in the treatment is recorded and in the reference is also recorded and the number of uh, event not occurring is recorded for treatment and for reference so here we have a binary outcome which has only two levels in it either the event occurring or not occurring then the effect size estimate will be the odds ratio the following uh, graph shows the meta-analysis for the previous data and as uh, had explained already the forest plot consists of three sections descriptive statistics diagrammatic representation and an overall estimate of the effect size with heterogeneity test the plot shows that there are 12 studies the uh, odds ratio log odds ratio for each individual study is calculated and the standard error is also produced a 95 percent confidence interval with a lower and upper limit is given and a p-value is generated and a weight percentage which reflects the uh, contribution or the influence and the contribution of the uh, sample size on the overall uh, meta-analysis this plot was generated in SPSS the second section here is just representation of this section here this is square blue square symbols represent the effect size which is the odds ratio for each individual study the horizontal line is the 95 percent confidence interval and the sizes of these squares value varies uh, uh, depending on the weight percentage or the sample size larger sample size have larger square the red dashed line represent the uh, line for the value which is the overall estimated effect size or the overall odds ratio 
the diamond shape structure here is the overall odds ratio for the 12 studies and as shown here the overall uh, uh, odds ratio is 2.79 and 95 percent confidence interval is also produced and the horizontal line is the 95 percent confidence interval the third section here shows the overall with the heterogeneity test which examine the degree of variability among the results from those 12 studies with an i-squared generated which is 12% uh, which is a low level of heterogeneity with a p-value greater than 0.05. So thus the odds ratio uh, is used as an estimate of the effect size in performing meta-analysis for data that are binary. Risk ratio, which is an effect size estimate, uh, can be used when the outcome is binary. What is risk? Risk is the probability of an event occurring so it is the proportion of individuals with a certain characteristic within a group so risk can be basically represented in this equation number of cases divided by the population at risk so what is a risk ratio risk ratio is also known as a relative risk it is the ratio of the probability of an event occurring in a treatment or intervention or exposure group compared to the probability of an event occurring in the control or an exposed or reference group. It is calculated as the risk of an outcome occurring in exposed group compared to the risk of outcome in unexposed group so it does measure the association between exposure and outcome and the risk uh, ratio can be interpreted as the risk of an outcome associated with the exposure compared to the risk of the outcome in the unexposed group so the risk ratio is the ratio of the risk in exposed group to the risk in the unexposed group it is a relative difference between two proportion and it is simplified in this formula risk ratio is equal to risk in the intervention divided by the risk in control so here I had inserted a uh, data uh, for uh, a study that had looked at and investigated the effect of uh, a new treatment on a condition. Here we have two groups, treated groups and control group. And the event occurring in the treated group is recorded as a success and the event not happening is recorded as failed and the total number of participants in the treated group is given here for the control also the number of cases or participant who had the event or who had succeeded in recovering from the condition is recorded here with those who did not recover or the event is not occurring is also recorded here and the total number of participants for the control is recorded so here we have a binary outcome uh, in which there are two levels in it either event occurring or not occurring to calculate the risk ratio the risk ratio is equal to the risk of the exposed to the risk of unexposed risk of treated to the risk of controlled uh, so the event in the treated is 45 which is the number of cases divided by the total number of population at risk which is 60 for the treated and for the control the number of cases is 10 divided by the 
population size at risk which is 65 and once we divide this all together it shows a ratio of 4.8 so there is a risk ratio of 4.8 this is the way to calculate the risk ratio for a binary outcome risk ratio can be greater than one which indicates an increased risk as it is an association and a risk ratio less than one indicates decreased risk and a risk ratio of one indicates no difference in the risk between groups the risk ratio is commonly used in cohort study and is suitable when the outcome is more common here i had inserted uh, data for 12 studies that investigating the efficacy of a drug on treating certain condition and the following uh, scores were uh, con uh, included uh, each study had uh, segregated the participant into intervention or treated group and a control and the number of events occurring in the intervention is counted and the number of no event is counted and the total number of uh, participant is also calculated for the intervention and for the control also the number of events or number of cases at risk is counted uh, uh, total number in the control to perform meta-analysis based on estimate effect size which is a risk ratio the risk ratio can be calculated and estimated as an effect size uh, for the intervention uh, compared to the control and once a uh, meta-analysis is performed a uh, following forest plot uh, is generated from the previous meta-analysis of the data and as shown here the forest plot has three part the descriptive part the diagrammatic part and the overall uh, effect uh, uh, size estimate with the heterogeneity test in the first part the 12 study is listed here with the uh, uh, risk ratio calculated for each study with 95 percent confidence interval p-value for the risk ratio weight percentage which reflects the uh, influence of the sample size on the uh, meta-analysis the second section is diagrammatic representation of the descriptive statistics with a square symbol here represent the risk ratio for each study there is variation in the size and this is due to the weight percentage which reflects uh, sample size as larger sample size will have larger square the horizontal line is the 95% confidence interval and the diamond shape here is the overall pooled calculated risk ratio with a 95% confidence interval represented by the horizontal line. The vertical red dashed line represent the calculated pooled risk ratio which is 1.58 the third section here is the overall calculated uh, risk ratio with a p-value and a 95% confidence interval and a heterogeneity test to determine and assess the level of heterogeneity between the results from those separate 12 studies with an I-squared value of 9% which is a very low and a p-value greater than 0.05 so there is low level of heterogeneity between the data extracted from these 12 studies so what is the difference between odds ratio and risk ratio as I have described previously the odds ratio is the ratio of the odds of an event occurring in the treatment group to the odds of the an event uh, occurring in the control group the odds ratio is the ratio of two odds the relative risk or uh, risk ratio is the ratio of the probability of an event occurring in the treatment group uh, to the probability of an event occurring in the control group 
so it is the relative risk um, uh, is the ratio of two probabilities meta-analysis types that can be performed to analyze data uh, or result extracted from multiple uh, independent uh, research or clinical or medical or healthcare studies to generate uh, overall or pooled effect size there are several types of meta analysis that can be uh, used or performed depending on the experimental or intervention design and on the outcome of the um, uh, research or the trials or the study so single group meta-analysis is the first type the second one is two group meta-analysis this type of meta-analysis can be performed when there are two groups the research designed that there will be two groups one group is the treatment group or the intervention group or the exposure group a second group is the control or unexposed or a reference group to compare so then two group meta-analysis can be performed and the third one which is the multiple group meta-analysis is performed when there are more than two groups for single group meta-analysis a proportional meta-analysis can be performed or a means meta-analysis can be done or correlation coefficient meta-analysis or incidence rates meta-analysis all this depends on the uh, uh, research outcome and the uh, estimated effect size uh, in the first uh, uh, analysis it is a proportion or a percentage in the second one the estimate or the effect size is the means and in the third one is the correlation coefficient and in the fourth one is the rate to perform proportional meta-analysis the outcome from the studies can be or any type of a binary data that is recorded in a format of a percentage or a rate or a proportion or a frequencies so any formats of the data um, extracted from the studies that is reported in a percentage or proportion with a single group then proportional meta-analysis can be performed the proportional meta-analysis can be performed to uh, um, calculate the disease or the condition prevalence in a population it can be also used to um, um, calculate the overall uh, treatment response rates uh, adverse events rates incidence rates so it can be either looking for the prevalence or the incidence of a disease of or a condition in a population or uh, treatment response rates for in specific intervention or for side effect from uh, having a treatment with uh, drugs or medicine so meta-analysis can be performed proportional meta-analysis on data extracted uh, from several uh, multiple uh, studies that report the outcome in either percentage or rates and looking for prevalence or uh, treatment response or adverse effects or adverse event uh, or adverse effect of a drug the second type of meta-analysis is the pairwise group meta-analysis 
pairwise group meta-analysis is performed when there are two groups exposure or unexposed or control the um, outcome can be continuous in this case the uh, standardized mean difference can be considered and used as an effect size in which the means and the standard deviation for the exposure and the control is calculated and provided then the effect size which is smd can be uh, used and there are several type of standardized mean difference the using the hedges um, uh, or the cohen's d or the glacius uh, delta uh, approach if the outcome is a binary and a binary outcome is an outcome in which the uh, data have only two levels either yes or no uh, disease or no disease then the uh, effect size that is measured and can be used for two group meta analysis is the odds ratio the risk ratio the hazard ratio and finally the uh, third uh, type of meta-analysis is multiple group meta-analysis when there are more than two groups then this uh, analysis will be um, used when there are more than two groups and it is called the network meta-analysis so there are several different types of meta-analysis to perform and selection of each type depend in on the um, um, experimental or intervention design and the outcome whether there is a single group pairwise group or multiple groups Proportional meta-analysis is a single group meta-analysis. Meta-analysis is a statistical method that is performed by combining data extracted from uh, several independent research studies. Those studies had already been published and their finding has been uh, published and the, their uh, results are combined um, and then analyzed in a meta-analysis uh, method to calculate the overall or the pooled estimate of the effect size for these uh, studies that addressing the same specific clinical or medical or research question the meta-analysis will also um, assess the heterogeneity between the results from those independent studies and will also produce a forest plot a forest plot is just a diagram or a chart that displays the summary or the outcome of the meta-analysis it consists of three sections the first section is descriptive statistics. The second section is the uh, diagrammatic representation of the descriptive statistics. And the third section is the uh, estimate of the overall effect size with p-value and heterogeneity test. So what is single group meta-analysis? It is a meta-analysis with a study design including only one group and no control group for comparison and that's why it's called single group meta-analysis proportional meta-analysis is one type of a single group meta-analysis it is a statistical method used in meta-analysis that combines results from multiple studies that report proportions or rates so it does calculate the pooled overall estimate of the proportion 
or read from those several independent study that addressing the same scientific research question. The data for performing proportional meta-analysis can be any binary uh, outcome or dichotomous or categorical data, such as the presence or absence of a particular condition that is reported in either a proportion, a fraction, a percentage, or a rate of occurrence uh, that can be included in the proportional meta-analysis. So the data can be proportion, fraction, percentage, or rates. The proportional meta-analysis is commonly used for the analysis of prevalence and incidence of a condition or a disease in population. Here in this slide, I had inserted a table that contain data for 12 studies. Those data are investigating the incidence or the prevalence of a specific condition in a population. And the uh, number of cases reported is given here in the column labeled as event and the total number of participants in each uh, study is given here. So for this uh, um, studies, there are 12 studies, they're all addressing the same scientific research question and the data here collected from each study is reported in a proportion or it can be in a percentage so the outcome here is proportion once the meta-analysis is performed uh, proportional meta-analysis an output is generated which is a forest plot so this is a forest plot that have three sections in it the first section is a descriptive statistics the second one is diagrammatic representation and the third one is the overall estimate of the effect size and the heterogeneity test in the first section is the description of the data 12 studies the event in each study the total number of participants and the calculated proportion for each study with a 95% confidence interval and a weight percentage for each study based on the sample size. The second part which is the diagrammatic reflection or representation of these descriptive data. The red square here represent the effect size estimate, which is the proportion. There is a variation in the size of the square that is reflected based on the sample size or the weight percentage. The horizontal line here represent the 95% confidence interval. And the vertical line is the line for the overall or pooled effect size. And the diamond shaped structure here is the um, overall estimated effect size, which is the proportion, i.e. the pooled proportion. The third section from this proportional meta-analysis output, which is the forest plot, is the calculated overall um, proportion, which is 0.34 with 95% confidence interval, and a heterogeneity test with an I-squared value, which is 70%, and a p-value of less than 0.05. So this forest plot or diagram summarizes the output from proportional meta-analysis for all those 12 studies that are pooled to together and the proportion calculated for each individual study and the overall proportion also is estimated subgroup meta-analysis and producing a forest plot 
Meta-analysis is a statistical method that can be used to combine data extracted from several publications or several studies that are independent and separate but all addresses the same scientific, medical or clinical research question and the objective of the meta-analysis is to provide or generate an overall estimate of the effect size when comparing between intervention and a control group and the subgroup meta-analysis is sectioning the result based on a factor or a variable and performing separate uh, meta-analysis for each subgroup from the subgroup meta-analysis a forest plot is generated with uh, sections for each subgroup forest plot is a graph or a diagram that displays the summary of the subgroup meta-analysis the forest plot consists of three parts the first part is descriptive statistics for the uh, subgroups meta-analysis including the um, study effect size, the p-value, the 95% confidence interval and the weight percentage. The second part is diagrammatic representation of the descriptive uh, statistics and the third part shows the um, calculated overall or pooled estimate effect size with p-value and heterogeneity test with an i-squared value. Subgroup meta-analysis is a statistical method that is used in meta-analysis to examine and assess the effects of intervention or treatment within specific subgroup of population. So, the studies in sub, subgroup meta-analysis are sectioned or divided into two or more subgroups based on certain characteristics or a factor or a variable such as age, gender, disease, severity, and so on. So, the pooled effect size is calculated for each subgroup and compared to determine whether there is a difference between these subgroups uh, um, in the estimated effect size. So the objective is to section the studies into two groups or more and then perform meta-analysis for each group then generate or calculate a pooled overall um, uh, estimate of the effect size for groups and then compare them to see if there is a difference and whether the difference is uh, significant. Examples of factors for subgrouping in meta-analysis uh, one, of, one of the examples to perform subgroup meta-analysis is to include a variable that have a, a age of individual that are sectioned into children, adults, and elderly. And a subgroup meta-analysis can be performed for the children, adult, and elderly. And then the result or the output is compared to find whether there is a difference between the three subgroups uh, another um, characteristic or variable that can be used for subgrouping is the gender St the studies can be uh, grouped based on the gender whether there is a male or a females and then uh, meta-analysis can be performed for each uh, gender and uh, another uh, factor that can be used for sectioning the studies or the data it can be the disease severity such as the early stages or advanced stages the data can be sectioned based on the uh, level of the or the progression level of the disease stage another example is uh, the body mass index which can be used as a factor for sectioning studies 
uh, based on uh, three uh, um, groups such as underweight, normal and overweight. Another uh, example of subgroup meta-analysis is smoking status in which there will be three uh, uh, groups or three subgroup meta-analysis, one for smoker, another for non-smoker and then a third for a past smoker. And finally, an example of subgroup meta-analysis is the ethnicity or the race in which uh, the pa participant or recruited into individual to the studies can be from different background whether they are white asian black or others and subgroup meta-analysis can be performed and the outcome or the output for each subgroup uh, can be generated and the effect size for each subgroup can be calculated and compared here i had inserted a data uh, from 12 uh, clinical uh, studies from 1 to 12 that are looking at the effect of specific intervention or treatment compared to control so here uh, i have uh, an experimental uh, group and a control group in the experimental group the uh, event is counted and inserted here and the, the total number of participants in that group is also included and for the event occurring in a control group is also recorded with the total number of participants in that control group so each study had sectioned the participant into either an experimental group or a control group and the uh, success or the happening of the event occurring in the uh, experimental group is recorded and the event uh, uh, occurring in the control group is also recorded and if you look here there is another variable which is gender so there are six studies that had only recruited males and another six studies that had only recruited females so a uh, subgroup meta-analysis can be performed based on the factor of the gender so uh, meta-analysis for the male group will be performed and the estimate effect size will be generated and the same for the females and since here the outcome is binary uh, in which there are two levels either the uh, event happening or not happening then uh, binary meta-analysis will be performed and specifically subgroup uh, binary meta-analysis method will be used here i had placed a forest plot generated in R statistics for the previous data and as shown here the plot has three sections descriptive statistics diagrammatic representation of the descriptive statistics and uh, overall estimate of the effect size and heterogeneity test uh, and sh as shown here the uh, studies are sectioned based on gender for male and for females and uh, uh, subgroup meta-analysis is performed for the male and then for the females and in this third section here is the meta-analysis without subgrouping and as shown here in the first section for the subgroup uh, meta-analysis for males the experimental and the control the event and the total is uh, inserted uh, with the weight percentage with which reflects the size of the sample so larger samples will have larger or higher weight percentage and that will have higher influence in the meta-analysis and the uh, uh, estimate effect size is the odds ratio odds ratio as the um, outcome here is binary and a fixed method is a fixed effect model is used 
and the MH method is used. So here as shown that uh, the odds ratio for each individual study is calculated and given here and the pooled uh, um, overall estimate of the effect size which is the odds ratio is calculated as given here with the 95% confidence interval. And here at this section the heterogeneity test is performed. Looking at the diagrammatic representation here, the uh, blue squares represent the odds ratio for each specific study, calculated for each specific study. Variation in the size of the square reflects the uh, weight percentage. Larger samples will have larger squares. The horizontal line represents a 95% confidence interval. The diamond shaped here uh, structure uh, represents the overall odds ratio. And the same thing here for the females. And if we look at the pooled uh, overall odds ratio for the males is 19.3 and for females is 14.3. And if we look at this section here, this section shows the overall uh, odds ratio without uh, performing subgroup meta-analysis and it is 16.03. So as shown here, there is a variation between males and females for this intervention or treatment when the effect size calculated is the odds ratio. So this uh, method of subgroup meta-analysis will section the studies and will give more details and will calculate the overall odds ratio or effect size for each subgroup and then compare them. The forest plot also will generate heterogeneity test which assess or examine the level or the degree of variability or heterogeneity between the results from those several six uh, independent uh, studies and an I squared is calculated which is equal to 0% which is shows that there is no heterogeneity and the p-value has to be greater than 0.05 however for the females the heterogeneity was 36% as the I squared was calculated and uh, the p-value is greater than 0.05 so this is uh, there is a low level of heterogeneity between the females uh, compared to the males and also furthermore the heterogeneity is calculated for the uh, uh, meta-analysis without subgrouping as the i squared was equal to zero percent and the p-value greater than 0 0.05 and a test of uh, subgroup difference is also given here so this is the essence of doing and performing subgroup meta-analysis to section the um, data or result from studies based on a factor which is gender here random or fixed effects model which one to use when performing meta-analysis meta-analysis is a statistical method that can be used by researcher to combine data or result extracted or collected from several independent uh, research uh, studies or clinical studies that addresses the same scientific or clinical research question. The objective of performing meta-analysis is to calculate the pooled uh, overall uh, estimate of the effect size that is measured whether it is a standardized mean difference or it is a correlation coefficient or it is an odds ratio or risk ratio or hazard ratio or even a proportion. The meta-analysis also will assess and examine heterogeneity between these uh, data from those several independent uh, 
uh, studies and measure the level of uh, heterogeneity. So, when to use a random effect or effects model? Random effects models have certain assumptions. Uh, it assumes that there is heterogeneity, which means that these studies that included in the meta-analysis are not identical i.e. they are heterogeneous it does assume studies may be estimating different true effect size whether the estimated effect size is an odd ratio risk ratio mean difference correlation or proportion then it assumes that there is a difference in the effect size the model also assumes that the observed true effect size does vary between studies and this variation is due to sampling error which is within study variability or between study variability which is heterogeneity and the effect sizes across studies and a second assumption is that the studies are diverse which means they are varying or they vary um, or there is variation in the methods used in the population structure in the intervention and the procedure performed and a third assumption is that the model can be used when there are substantial heterogeneity among the effect size of the included studies. Random effect models that are in common use include some but not all the dear uh, Simonian, the layered inverse variance, the restricted maximum likelihood, the maximum likelihood, the empirical base, the hunter Schmidt. Any of these uh, options can be selected when performing meta analysis and choosing a random effects model. Moving to the fixed effects model. The model assumes that there is homogeneity among the results from those several uh, studies. So the model assumes homogeneity, no variation, similarity across the studies. It assumes that all studies included in the meta-analysis are estimating the same true effect size so it assumes that the variability observed in the effect size across the study is due to random sampling error and not due to genuine differences in the underlying effect so this is one of the assumptions for performing fixed effects models on results from different studies. The second assumption is that there is limited variability between the studies which uh, in, indicate that the studies combined are similar in the method or methods used in the population and in the setting or the design of uh, the uh, clinical research studies. A third assumption is that there is a small number of studies. So when there are a small number of studies, then preferably fixed effect model is the uh, um, options to uh, select. So there are three different options to use from or method when performing a meta-analysis and selecting the fixed effect effects model. The first one is mantel hansel method. The second one is Pitot odds ratio when the outcome is binary and measured in odds ratio. A third one is the inverse variance. So when to use the fixed or random effect or effects model. If there is heterogeneity 
and the data are limited then using random effect model is the first choice why random effect models weighs studies relatively more equally than fixed effect model pitu odds ratio method when performing meta-analysis meta-analysis is a statistical method or approach or a technique that combines data or result or findings extracted from several independent research or clinical studies that addresses the same scientific or clinical or research question the objective of performing meta-analysis is to calculate the pooled or estimate of the effect size measured from those several studies the effect size can be um, odds ratio when the outcome is binary binary outcome is an outcome or a variable that have two levels in it or two categories such as yes no agree disagree uh, smoke doesn't smoke uh, so the data are binomial or uh, nom nominal so the pitto odds ratio method is a statistical method that can be used to determine the odds ratio uh, in meta-analysis of clinical trials research or observational studies so in meta-analysis researchers combine the results from multiple studies to obtain a pooled estimate of the odds ratio the odds ratio is the measure of a strength of association between exposure and an outcome an exposure can be intervention uh, drug uh, administration treatment uh, or risk factors uh, and the outcome can be a disease so the pitu odds ratio method is specifically designed for performing meta-analysis when the events are rare or the outcomes occurs with low incidence rate so it is calculated using the fixed effect model assuming that the treatment effect is the same across all studies included in the meta-analysis so the p to odds ratio is used when the fixed effect model is chosen so the method is used when there is a zero cells in the contingency table that happen or occur when the uh, outcome event is rare so the method also allows for more reliable estimates and reduces the risk of bias so there are options to choose when performing fixed effects met method one of the options is the pitto uh, odds ratio method which can be used or selected in a certain criteria or condition funnel plot is an essential diagram that is produced when performing meta-analysis the plot is used to uh, examine and assess whether there is a publication bias and the meta-analysis is a statistical method that combines results extracted from several independent clinical or research studies that addresses the same scientific or medical or research questions aiming to generate an overall uh, effect size calculation from pooling all the results from those separate studies so what is a publication 
pious, a publication pious or care when studies with statistical significant effect sizes are highly likely picked, chosen, selected, and published than those studies with no significant effect size. So there is bias in selecting which uh, data to include in the analysis based on the effect size. So this is what is the mean of bias. So this bias can lead to overestimation of the actual or true effect size, which can deviate from making a final conclusion um, based on a pooled uh, result and based on the uh, meta-analysis. So to assess whether there is a presence of publication bias in meta-analysis and whether selected specific uh, um, significant uh, data or publication has been chosen and those that have no significant were deselected then the funnel plot can be drawn and a funnel plot is just visual examination of the uh, uh, distribution of the effect size for each study and another test that can back up the finding from the funnel plot is the Eagers regression test. When the funnel plot is drawn, usually it's backed up, supplemented and supported by a statistical method, which is the Eagers regression test. So this is the shape of the funnel plot that can be produced post meta analysis as shown here it is a scatter plot with an x axis that is have on it the effect size or sizes and on the y axis is the precision or the standard error so this graph is in a shape of a funnel inverted funnel and it will allow visual inspection of the distribution of these small dots here uh, under the funnel. So the graph will assess publication bias in meta-analysis. It is a scatter plot that displays study size effect estimate plotted against the one of these precision, which is can be a standard error or an inverse uh, standard error or a variance or an inverse variance, sample size, inverse sample size, square root of a sample size and log sample size. On the y-axis, any of these measurements can be plotted and on the x-axis, the effect size can also be plotted depending on the outcome from the um, uh, studies in which the data is in a format of a continuous outcome. So if the outcome was continuous, then the effect size can be used, which is the mean difference or the standardized mean difference or, or and standardized mean difference can include hedges G, Cohen's D, Glacius Delta, and also uh, uh, effect size can be a correlation coefficient, which is abbreviated as R. If the outcome from the publications, those separate publications is binary or are binary, then the odds ratio can be um, included here on the X axis or the risk ratio or the hazard ratio. To recap again, funnel plot, on the horizontal axis, the effect size estimate from each individual study is plotted, such as uh, SMD or 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 RR or proportion or rates or correlation. On the vertical axis is the measure of precision. In this case, is the standard error. And as I described here, the funnel shaped uh, plot has a line in the middle. This line in the middle represent the overall calculated estimate effect size from the meta-analysis. 
So this is the uh, pooled uh, estimate of effect size. Uh, in this case, uh, hedges, which is hedges G, which is a, a continuous outcome, and it is calculated through the standardized mean difference. These uh, blue circuits represent the effect size for each specific study with ID for each study. In the plot, smaller studies that have an effect size estimate are usually scattered widely at the bottom of the plot. Larger studies will have higher precision and they are clustered closely to the top of the plot. So anything clustered here in that part indicates a larger study, large study, and anything uh, clustered or uh, distributed here is for smaller studies. So uh, any of the estimate of the effect size. So that is the benefit of drawing the funnel plot. The objective of drawing funnel plot is to check and assess whether there is a publication bias. And from this diagram, or this funnel plot, uh, it is clearly shown that the distribution of the uh, effect size is clustered into one part um, and they are um, unevenly distributed as the right section have higher number of uh, estimate of effect size and on the left side is smaller. So this plot shows that there is publication bias based on visual ex uh, examination of the distribution of the effect size, counting the number of circles on the uh, above the line here, which is the overall uh, uh, effect size uh, compared to the uh, below it. So when there is a publication bias, there is asymmetrical funnel plots, i.e. the uh, distribution of the study effect size or sizes are unequal above and below the line of the overall effect size. Asymmetrical funnel plot shows that th when there are missing region of a smaller studies with no significant results and also uh, asymmetrical funnel plots indicates that studies with no significant result were not published or were excluded from the meta-analysis. So that is the uh, objective of drawing the funnel plot, so which leads eventually to overestimation of the um, effect size as uh, selective exclusion of uh, certain studies uh, can uh, affect the overall uh, pooled effect size. So when there is no publication bias, the distribution of the effect size for each individual studies are equally uh, on the right section here to the left section here. So there is symmetry. So when there is no publication bias, there is symmetrical funnel shape in which equal distribution of study effect size above and below the central line of overall effect size estimate. So smaller studies scattered more widely around the central line representing the pooled effect size estimate. Last remark here before closing that the funnel plot uh, visualization when there is asymmetrical funnel plot it does not necessarily indicate uh, um, publication bias and when there is symmetrical funnel plot again, again it does not necessarily rule it out. So what do we have to do? Then we have to back up the observation, visual um, examination and conclusion and conclusion based on the visual examination to back it up by a test which is Eager's regression test. Heterogeneity test uh, is one of uh, the statistical uh, method and statistical uh, test that is performed as a part of the meta-analysis 
and the meta analysis will combine data from several uh, independent studies and the objective of this heterogeneity test is to examine and assess the variability between those studies so what is heterogeneity heterogeneity is the degree of variability or inconsistency in the results of a multiple studies that will be combined to perform meta-analysis and then determine the pooled uh, overall effect size. So pooled studies in meta-analysis from different sources published uh, online, those studies when they were designed, they can differ in the population, the mean age of uh, um, participant or recruited to the uh, research study, the ethnicity of the individuals, whether it is a clinical trials, is it in phase one, phase two, phase three, and the treatment is applied, the dosage of that treatment or intervention, the duration of the exposure. So those uh, differences on the uh, setting of each study might have an, an impact on the meta-analysis and that's why heterogeneity is a test performed to find out the level of variability or inconsistency. So these different several factors can lead to heterogeneity in the effect size estimated, whether it is the mean or whether it is the correlation coefficient, whether it is a proportion or whether it is an odds ratio or risk ratio or hazard ratio. All these pooled or uh, overall estimate of the effect size can be uh, influenced by those heterogeneity. So, the test was developed, which is called heterogeneity test, to determine whether when we combine these studies, they are similar to each other that can be pooled and with less heterogeneity. So this is like a marker that tests whether those several studies can be combined and an overall estimate of the effect size can be generated and a conclusion can be drawn or there is a high variability and some of the uh, results from certain publication has to be uh, excluded. So there are two tests to perform heterogeneity test. The first one is Cochrane test, which is based on the Q uh, statistics, which is based on the chi-square and an I-square um, value is generated with a p-value. And the second test is the tau-squared test. So for the first test, as I said, it is based on the chi-square test and the formula for calculating the i-square value, which is an indicator for the level or the quantity of heterogeneity is given in this equation. i-squared is equal to Q stats minus degree of freedom divided by the Q stats multiplied by 100%. So Q is the chi-square statistics calculated and DF is the degree of freedom. So what is uh, I-squared? I-squared is a measure for heterogeneity or homogeneity. So it measures the degree of uh, uh, heterogeneity in the meta-analysis. So it's like a marker or an indicator uh, how uh, heterogeneous uh, or homogeneous the data pooled from several independent uh, research studies. It is expressed in a percentage. So the I squared is 
expressed in a percentage from zero to a hundred percentage so it represent the proportion or the percentage of the total variation in the effect sizes across those several uh, studies that addresses exact specific scientific research or clinical questions and that proportion of total variation um, in the effect study across across study is due to heterogeneity rather than chance and the i squared and q statistic can provide the magnitude of this heterogeneity as the values for the i squared if it is zero percent that indicates no heterogeneity 25 percent uh, suggest low heterogeneity 50% moderate heterogeneity and greater than 70% high heterogeneity and 100% indicates maximum heterogeneity. So high value of heterogeneity indicates that the results of individual studies may be too different to combine. So it's not a good idea to combine them if the heterogeneity indicator is high. So how to uh, overcome this? Then if there is a substantial high heterogeneity, then uh, another sources of heterogeneity has to be explored by taking the study and sectioning them or subgrouping them into certain groups based on let's say on the gender on the ethnicity and then perform a subgroup meta-analysis for each group or perform a meta-regression or a sensitivity analysis the next test is the tau squared test so it is a statistics test used in meta-analysis to estimate and quantify the extent of heterogeneity i.e variability among the effect size or sizes across those several independent study and this uh, uh, heterogeneity is not due to chance there is a genuine heterogeneity between the effect size for for those studies so the uh, test will perform quantification of the heterogeneity present among those effect size and this is estimated by the between study variance so the tau or tau squared value can range from zero to infinity larger value of uh, tau squared indicates greater heterogeneity among the effect sizes from several uh, in research studies a value of zero or close to zero suggests similar effect size across the studies so it is low heterogeneity probably there is homogeneity between the studies so an indicator for the whether there is heterogeneity is not is based on the value of uh, uh, tau squared and the p value if the p value is less than 0.05 that is an indicator that there is a heterogeneity among effect size so the uh, hypothesis for performing the heterogeneity test states as the following the null hypothesis states there is no heterogeneity among studies effect size i.e the effect size from those several uh, research studies are homogeneous or similar the alternative hypothesis indicate yes there is heterogeneity between the studies uh, effect size 
So if the p-value is less than 0.05, then there is uh, heterogeneity between the uh, studies results. If the p-value is greater than 0.05, then that uh, might indicate uh, there is uh, less heterogeneity and the data are more homogeneous. But uh, the, that need to be also uh, backed up by the I squared value or tau squared value. Here I had generated a forest plot from SPSS. This uh, slide shows a forest plot uh, generated for uh, data from several uh, studies uh, and the estimate effect size was the hedges G and the uh, small uh, section which is the third part of the graph here enlarged is uh, the um, where the uh, test of homogeneity and the values for I squared and tau squared is given with the p-value as shown the model here is used random effects model and heterogeneity test was performed and the tau squared value is generated uh, with uh, 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 h squared and i squared uh, value also generated which is equal here to uh, a 23 percentage and uh, uh, the homogeneity test was performed based on the q statistics and the degree of freedom uh, is given here with a p value of greater than 0.05 so from this we can make with confidence a conclusion that there is low level of heterogeneity among those uh, uh, results extracted from several independent uh, research studies eagers regression uh, test for assessing a publication bias from data or result extracted from several independent publication to perform meta-analysis. So meta-analysis is a statistical method that combines data from several independent research studies that addressing specific clinical or medical or research question those pooled data uh, are uh, uh, analyzed through uh, meta-analysis to produce an overall effect size uh, estimate from those separate studies. So what is a publication bias? A publication bias occurs when studies with the significant outcome or significant results are published preferably and released into different journals and those that they have no significant uh, results are less likely to be published so there is a bias or shift toward publishing uh, result or data that show uh, or shows positive uh, or uh, statistically significant uh, uh, association or effect um, relative to the studies that uh, have no statistical signific significance or are negative so this is the concept of publication bias so selection of significant result and deselection of uh, non-significant uh, results will lead eventually to overestimation of the calculated overall effect size when performing meta-analysis so this will deviate from the true uh, effect size the most common method that are in practice and uh, used to assess publication bias when performing meta-analysis on a collection of data extracted from several studies 
to um, uh, calculate the overall or pooled effect size are the first one is the funnel plot well, funnel plot is a scatter plot that will allow a visual examination of the distribution of the um, estimate of the effect size a second method which is statistical based on statistical analysis uh, such as the eagers regression test the big and masmadars rank correlation test and the trim and fill method so to check and examine and uh, assess whether there is a publication bias funnel plot can be produced post uh, meta-analysis and the funnel plot as shown here is a scatter plot with the y-axis plotted in it a standard error or a sample size and on the x-axis is the estimate of the effect size when the outcome or the data are continuous then standardized mean difference can be used one of these are the cohen's d or the hedges g or the glaces delta if the uh, outcome is binary then the estimate of the effect size can be the odds ratio or the risk ratio or the hazard ratio or even it can be a proportion the shape of the uh, plot as shown here is in a shape of a funnel inverted funnel and the line in the middle here is the calculated overall estimate of the effect size for here in this case is the Cohen's D and the small blue circles are the estimate of the effect size for each individual studies so here there is uh, five uh, and five ten studies in total uh, included in the meta-analysis and from this funnel plot it is possible to visually determine whether there is a uh, publication bias by counting the number of um, estimate effect size that um, are found in this section and the number of the effect size in the other section so this line will split the the funnel into two halves and for lack of bias in publication the distribution of the uh, if estimate of the effect size should be equal on both uh, sections for which is which means symmetrical distribution for a uh, publication bias there will be asymmetrical uh, distribution of the data so this is one of the steps that can be performed to check whether there is a publication bias but this is not uh, um, enough uh, um, as it is based on visual uh, inspection and uh, personal judgment another test that need to be done um, statistical test that will back up or validate the outcome from the final plot which is the eagles regression test so this test is called eagles regression asymmetry test because it check for uh, whether or it test for asymmetry in the funnel plot so it is a statistical method that is used in meta-analysis to assess for publication bias it examines the relationship between the standardized effect size estimate which could be the odds ratio the uh, risk ratio or the smd based on the type of an outcome whether it is a binary or it is a continuous so the estimate of the uh, uh, studies included in the meta-analysis and their precision and the precision is the inverse of the standard error so it is 
based on linear regression method and that uh, aims to fit a regression line to the data point on the funnel plot. Since the funnel plot is a scatter plot, then a regression line can be fitted into the uh, dots on the uh, plot uh, to uh, may generate a regression model. So the Eagles regression test is also called Eagles intercept method because it provides a test for the intercept of the regression line. So if the intercept of the regression line uh, um, is examined and de determined uh, to see whether it is significantly different from zero. The aims of Eagles regression test is uh, to assess and test whether the intercept of the regression line is statistically different from zero. So statistically significant intercept suggest the presence of publication bias. The value of the intercept also is important as if it is cl not close to zero or not equal to zero, then this suggests the presence of publication bias. And for lack of publication bias, the uh, intercept values should be as close as possible to zero or equal to zero with a p-value greater than 0 0.05 which is not significant. To perform the Eagles regression test the null hypothesis has to be generated an alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis states that there is no publication bias, i.e. the intercept is equal to zero. The alternative uh, hypothesis states that there is a publication bias and the intercept is not equal to zero. And then this is backed up by the p-value statistical calculated p-value which could be less than 0 0.05 or greater than 0 0.05. For no publication bias, the p-value need to be above the 0 0.05. So I had here inserted a output of Eagles regression uh, test for a data or an outcome that is continuous and based on um, SMD effect size and as shown from the table here as circles the uh, intercept value is 0.25 and the uh, p-value is greater than 0.05. Another uh, method other than um, linear regression uh, tests such as Eagles regression, uh, that method is based on the rank correlation test. It's called Big and Maz Mazmadar's rank correlation test. It assesses if there is a significant correlation again between the ranks of the effect size and the ranks of their variances. This method is based on the Kendall Tau uh, correlation uh, coefficient and it measures the association between two variables. Sensitivity analysis when performing meta-analysis. Meta-analysis is a statistical technique that can be used to uh, combine data or result from several independent research study, extract the results and then combine them and then uh, uh, calculate the overall or pooled estimate of the effect size for all these studies that address similar uh, specific scientific or research question. Sensitivity analysis. What is sensitivity analysis? It is a process of examining and re-examining the reliability of the meta-analysis finding. 
So it is a process of examining robustness of the meta-analysis finding. How? By evaluating the effect of various changes or alteration in the methodological uh, and analytical uh, selection on the overall findings. So it is a, a, a way of examining the influence, the effects of altering certain specific methodology or analysis uh, on the overall estimate of the effect size. It does identify sources of heterogeneity or bias that can have substantial impact on the overall results. How do we do sensitivity analysis? Is by repeating the primary meta-analysis or the essential or the first meta-analysis performed with certain changes to the data or study included in the analysis. So these changes can be in the analysis model. So the sensitivity analysis can be performed by redoing the meta-analysis and reselecting either a fixed effect models or a random effect model. Another change is that to exclude result from specific studies that shows high heterogeneity. So to check whether there is a, a change in the heterogeneity by deselecting a specific study or studies and then uh, examine the level of heterogeneity. Another sensitivity analysis can be performed by changing the effect size measured. If the odds ratio is used as a measure of effect size, then a risk ratio can be used. Similarly, for a continuous data, so odd ratio and risk ratio for binary outcome, for continuous outcomes such as uh, uh, standardized mean difference can be used or replaced by mean difference or hedges G can be used or Cohen's D and so on. So these are the changes that can be uh, adopted when performing and uh, repeating meta-analysis. So it's just a repetition of meta-analysis with changes of one of these uh, uh, options and then observing the effect on the overall estimate of the effect size and also the overall changes in heterogeneity. Sensitivity analysis will allow researcher uh, or examiner to test the extent to which the result of a meta-analysis might change when certain assumptions or decision are altered. So it is a way of checking the overall uh, findings from the meta-analysis one, when one of these assumptions or um, uh, statistical methods are changed or altered. Those changes including study selection criteria, quality assessment, statistical method, heterogeneity, publication bias, and data synthesis. So the sensitivity analysis will examine uh, the magnitude or the scale of the changes in the results when one of these are altered when repeating the meta-analysis. So for sensitivity analysis, study selection criteria researcher can examine the effect of including or excluding of certain specific selected studies. Those studies are selected based on certain specific characteristics such as study design, sample size, or quality criteria. By changing, altering the criteria exclusion inclusion, researcher can determine whether the overall result are sensitive to these changes. And that's why it's called sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity analysis also can explore the influence of studies with low quality levels 
by excluding studies with high risk of bias or low methodological quality. Excluding those study can help to evaluate the potential effect of a study quality on overall result. So it is a, a procedure of excluding uh, certain studies that have low level of quality and assessing the impact on the uh, overall effect size. The sensitivity analysis will allow the researcher to test the robustness of the finding by comparing the different statistical models or methods. An example is comparing fixed effects and random effects model using different effect size measures such as odd ratio, risk ratio, and so on. This test will examine if overall estimate effect, uh, effect size are or, or sizes are dependent on the specific modeling assumption. The sensitivity analysis also will allow exploration of the influence of a study with high heterogeneity in overall uh, results. So by deselecting those study or studies with substantial high effect sizes or performing subgroup meta-analysis based on study characteristics, researcher can assess the impact of heterogeneity on the overall finding. Sensitivity analysis also allow the researcher to assess the impact of different methods for combining study results, such as using fixed effect, random effect, by excluding studies with larger effect size or by applying different weighing schemes. If you are a student or a researcher and you have a data, whether it is um, um, quantitative or qualitative, and you want to perform a statistical uh, analysis on that data using any of the softwares listed here, whether it's SPSS, Excel, Stata, Jamovi, R Statistics, Graphpad, Prism, Revman, GMP, Python, then do contact me to arrange for either a one-to-one -one private tutor session or a training course uh, on any of these uh, statistical packages. My contact details are given here. So don't hesitate to uh, write to me or email me if you need uh, a private one-to-one uh, -one, uh, tutoring or a training course.